Hello, hello, hello. This is the first in my nine episode long series on Team Fortress 2. This is going to be a fun one, so let's get started. Today we'll be talking about Scout, as he is the first character in this selection screen. Scout is definitely in my top 10 favorite classes in Team Fortress 2. So let's start with the scatter guns, shall we? Now first on my list is obviously Stock. The Stock scatter gun is simply the best scatter gun, the most consistent. It's so good that there isn't much to say about it. It does 100 damage close range, 6 shots in the chamber. If you miss, you're probably going to die. That's about it. But now we'll be talking about the force in nature. Some people call it the fan, I call it a piece of shit. This weapon technically does more damage than stock, but who gives a shit because the design of the weapon is to make you not be able to hit your shots. The force of nature has a minus 10% damage penalty and a minus 66% clip size, which means you only have two bullets in the chamber. The reload animation is very quick as you load both of the two bullets at the same time, but that's not really the downside, is it? 175% ramp up and all 12 pellets connecting, you will do 113 damage. 50% faster firing speed, this is really the heavy hitter of the scatter guns. Along with that, it makes up for its minus 10% damage penalty by giving it plus 20% bullets on shot, yeah, that's right, instead of shooting the stock 10 pellets per shot, you'll be shooting 12, which makes it do more damage than stock. Now, you're probably like, that sounds like the best weapon in the game. Let me go buy a festive killstreak strange version of it with a name tag to call it something edgy. No, because there's one more stat that ruins the entire gun for everybody. This upside of knockback on target and shooter shouldn't be classified as an upside, as it ruins the gun. Let's talk about why this can be good in certain situations. Well, it's a pseudo air blast, you could basically just throw people off the map if there's map hazards, right? Um, another way you could use it as, is as another jump, where you can shoot yourself up into the air. Now that's where the plus sides of this plus side end, because every time you shoot somebody with this thing, you're guaranteed to hit, miss the next shot or at least most of it. Because by the time you actually get your second round off, they're already sent to the stratosphere, so you're gonna do like 12 damage to them. Next we have the Soda Popper, which is very similar to the Force of Nature in a lot of ways, but rather than being a Mimi side grade, it's a straight upgrade from stock. This is another side-by-side -side double barrel shotgun type of weapon that the Scout has. It has a plus 50% faster firing speed, 25% faster reload time, and on hit, it builds hype. You're probably asking, what is hype? Well, hype is something that makes you fucking fly if you get 100% hype. Yeah, that's right. Did you think that Scout couldn't get high enough already with the atomizer and the fucking winger? No, you can fucking fly with the soda popper. Like, actually fly. <laughs> it's ridiculous and funny and you fly around your enemies while you shoot down on them, and then as soon as they're like, hey, there's a scout above me, how about I shoot him? You just fly away before they can even react. So, how does that sound? This gun makes what I would consider a carnal sin of game design. It does higher burst damage on a gun that is only used for burst damage. So, it's basically the scatter gun, except it does 200 damage faster than the scatter gun does 200 damage, which is realistically all you need for killing everybody you want to. And obviously that couldn't be the only way where it's a straight upgrade, because then it would be almost a side grade. No, it also does more DPS because the reload speed is so much faster than stocks. So truly, this is just straight up better than stock. Now, what I will say is that if you miss two of your shots, well, you're kind of in an awkward situation, and there's not much you can do about it, where you'll probably just get shot. Also, I have trouble DMing scouts with this, because they can put up more sustained damage, whereas I can only do burst. This could just be me being bad, but um, I like to blame it on the weapon, so I don't sound like a loser. So I'm going to change it up right here. I'm going to try to sell this weapon to you. What is your favorite? part of the scatter gun in Team Fortress 2. Ah, you see, I thought so. I knew it would be you peppering people at long ranges to do 12 damage at a time until they inevitably just kill you while you're doing that. Well, don't worry, I have a gun that can help you do that slightly better. Presenting the shortstop, it has four bullets in the chamber, 
Its reload speed is relatively high, it is slightly more accurate, and finally it has a very useful feature where you can tickle somebody for one damage and it'll make them go back two centimeters. Also, you take more knockback for some reason. Now doesn't that sound quite epic? Alright, let's get real. The only reason why you're equipping this thing is because you're using the Criticola and just doing 12 damage to people until they just kill bind. The shove mechanic is so useless that you can barely push someone off a cliff if they're standing on the edge of it. The shortstop makes the most useful part of the class absolutely useful. One of the best parts about playing Scout is running in fast and then running out fast once you got a kill. Yeah, with the shortstop there's no reason to run around because it doesn't do any more damage at close range than it does at far range. Do you still remember what the stocks shotgun's pellet count was? Yeah, it was 10. You remember the force of nature? Yeah, it was 12. The shortstop, yeah, it's four. Four pellets that will do six damage at each, at the range that it was meant to be used at. Four pellets, that's maximum damage, is 72 if you hit all of them. And it doesn't even have that big of a firing rate or reload speed buff. This is probably the most useless weapon for Scout that he has. Now let's talk about the Backscatterer. I don't even have this weapon, but I don't need to have it to tell you exactly how stupid it is. This is finally going back to the stock style of shotgun, which is opposed to the break action style that we've been talking about before we reload all of the bullets at the same time. The ammo count is 4, so minus 30, uh, 3% is the clip size from stock. This weapon is 20% less accurate, so you have to be kissing their assholes if you want to hit any of your shots. And for the effort of getting behind them and ramming your gun inside of their asshole, you get a mini crit. That reward is cool and all, but it's not like you're gonna be one-shotting heavies. You're doing 142 damage, which is respectable, but there's no escape plan once you do that 142 damage because there's no way they're not going to turn around instantaneously and blow you away in the time that it takes for you to get another shot out. I will say that this gun isn't complete shit, it's just completely destroyed by the fact that stock is just better, because it has better accuracy. You're not going to be hitting more than like five pellets at just normal stock ranges, so good luck with that shit. Alright, let's talk about the final scatter gun. Um, this one is fun. It makes you go real fast when you hit people enough times, but it's also one of the worst, if not the worst, scatter guns in the game. I'll tell you why. You move slightly slower at the beginning of the game, only to get slightly faster if you actually get enough shots off of somebody for it to work. Now, let me tell you why this is worse than it sounds. This gun used to be the overpowered scout weapon, and the reason why is because you could outrun your hitboxes, and Valve thought, okay, how do we make a change to this weapon to make it more fun to play with and more fun to play against? Should we fix our netcode so they can't out outrun their hitboxes? No, we should make the gun absolutely useless so people won't use it. Absolutely genius, Steve. You're fired. Fuck you. No, this is what it does, right? So you get boost every time you get a shot, but if you double jump, you lose the boost. All right, that was kind of what the stats were originally. Now if you get shot, you lose almost every fucking bit of boost you have at like just total. It's ridiculous. You lose like 25 health and then your entire boost will be gone. It, it is absolutely ridiculous. This thing is really good if you're good at dodging or if you can kind of just run in, kill somebody, run out. But the vast majority of the time when you're using this weapon, you run in, get shot once, lose all your speed, can't run away or dodge, try to run away, and then get killed, you know? Or you actually manage to kill that guy and then that exact same thing transpires. It's pretty dumb. I think if they combined the Babyface's Blaster and the Backscatterer, it would kind of turn into an interesting weapon, because it's easier to get behind people when you're faster, but it's also extremely ridiculous to get the uh, boost 
from long ranges because you're gonna have to get this from long ranges so it's also extremely ridiculous to actually shoot people from long ranges with a backscatter so it, it, it would make the guns a bit more interesting to play with I don't know if it would be balanced or not uh, it kind of sounds like no one would use it because it has downsides that are pretty bad um, this weapon has you know minus 34 percent clip size that's kind of just the stock hey fuck you, this is a good gun, so we're going to re reduce it by two bullets, which is kind of a nothing stat, because having four bullets versus six bullets is kind of like a meh thing. You do 100 damage per shot, so I don't really know why you would need six bullets, because, I mean, unless you're trying to take on a whole team. So that's kind of the stat that you get with a lot of the stock scatter guns, is just reducing the ammo count, and that's kind of a nothing stat. Alright, let's get on to the secondaries. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with this stuff, so let's just get the pistols out of the way. I'm gonna kinda go speed round, because I'm already at 10 minutes here. Uh, the stock pistol, it's the stock pistol. You've played with it on Engineer, you've played with it on a lot of other classes. It's good. You should probably use that one, just like you should probably use the stock scatter gun or the soda popper. Now, the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol is the same situation as the Soda Popper. It has a faster firing rate, so the minus 9 bullets doesn't really affect it all that much, because it does kind of do more DPS than the stock pistol. I prefer stock over the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol, just like I prefer uh, stock over the Soda Popper, but I would consider it a pretty much direct upgrade as it does very similar DPS, if not more, and it has the added feature of every time you hit somebody, it gives you three health. And then finally, the winger, it has the stat that it does more damage, but it also has less bullets, and I don't exactly see a super good benefit of this, except trying to snipe people with it, I guess, but it's kind of more useless for spamming out sentries. This is a true side grade because it's not a very good finisher, but what it, what it is good at doing is giving you extra jump height, which is one of the stats for the weapon. All right, so let's talk about the flying guillotine. Uh, you can throw through walls, that's pretty much it. No, I'm kidding. It's useful for bleed strats, but other than that, I mean, it's kind of meh. It does good damage long range, but you're not really gonna hit the projectile that long range because of the arc and all that stuff, so. You're really going to be wanting to use this more medium range, and at that point, why not just use the pistol if you're not trying to get those bobbles after. So, I don't know. Kind of a meh weapon. Alright, um, now we have the Mad Milk, which is probably the most overpowered weapon for Scout right now. Um, it's the Gerardi, but for Scout, you don't do mini crits against enemies, but what you do is you get 60% of the damage done to enemies back. Which is really good for a lot of reasons that I shouldn't really have to explain to you. Anything that helps your team out is going to be probably the best thing that you can choose for your class. Now, it also extinguishes teammates. So you could pretty much just indiscriminately throw this into a crowd of people, just like you can do the same with a Jurati and it'll help somebody somewhere. So, just, keep, just throw these things everywhere. Jurati, Mad Milk, whatever. Chuck them into crowds of people constantly until the enemy team gets really mad at you and leaves. All right, finally now we're on to the sodas. Um, there are two in the game, the Criticolo, which just makes you take mini crits and give mini crits, which is, it sounds good, but it's really not. It used to be good, but now it's kind of trash because you don't do enough damage to one-shot people, and you also die just as fast as they do, so you're probably just going to get shot if you try to use this thing. So I would pass on it. The Bonk Atomic Punch is simultaneously the worst weapon in the game and has no downsides. Um, it's not really the worst weapon in the game. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but what it does is it gives you... Um, invincibility for like a little bit, right? Which one can get you stuck if there's a century because it can just shoot you into a corner where you can't do anything. And two, 
Um, it's pretty bad. Like, why would you want to be behind the entire enemy team? Somebody's just gonna follow you and kill you. And once you're out of the Bonk Atomic Punch's um, effects, once you go back to being um, mortal again and being able to shoot people again, um, you have the effect that you're slower, you have the slowdown effect, which is stupid because you could just strafe and it just isn't a downside if you strafe because strafing while moving forward negates the slowness effect in this game for some reason and they still haven't fixed it as far as I know. Well those are the secondaries, um, a lot to say in a short amount of time I will say, but here is the melees finally. Um, we have first the atomizer which does mini crits mid-air which do slightly more damage than stock. I think it does 37 and stock does 35 per hit. So it's real stupid. And midair also counts as in water, so there's kind of a utility to that, but it does slightly more damage than stock, so why even care? Right? Why even go for it? The real upside of this is that it gives you a triple jump instead of a double jump, making you go even higher. So there's a whole like jump scout loadout basically where you can fly. And it's a pretty okay weapon. Good utility. Not really good at fighting people, but, you know, you don't really need a scout melee to fight people. If you ever get in a melee range, you've made a mistake, I'll say that. Um, the Boston Basher, this is the, probably the most useless scout, um, melee for actually fighting people. I would say even the Sun on the Stick that I'll get to soon has more utility when you're actually fighting people than the Boston Basher. But the Boston Basher does a lot of damage, but it's a bleed damage over time effect. But uh, nobody really cares about fighting with the Boston Basher. What people really care about with the Boston Basher is the fact that you can hurt yourself if you miss your shot. And this sounds like a massive downside, but it's actually a massive upside. Why this is an upside is because if you keep hurting yourself, you'll make sure that you're building the, or your team's medic at maximum uber build, which means that you can get uber way faster than the enemy team if you just equip this simple weapon, which is pretty cool for, you know, a lot of reasons, but it, it's just kind of useless if you don't have a med and past the um, beginning phase where you build med, um, build uber with your med at spawn, there's no real reason to keep it equipped unless you plan on building uber again because it kind of is somewhat of a detriment to you if you accidentally use it. I'll say that there is one um, upside to it beyond the med uh, uber building, and that is the fact that you can damage boost yourself up a slight degree um, pretty much randomly if you hit yourself while in mid-air um, with this. And why? <laughs> Just use the atomizer if you want to do that. But technically, if you had infinite health, you could probably get pretty high up into the air before you get a random chance. Nope, you know. All right, so now we have the fan of war. This uh, this weapon is very, very interesting. It's half a meme in the community and half an actually viable weapon if you use it. In the, well, what I'm gonna guess is the intended way. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hit somebody once with this thing and then it gives you mini crits on them for quite a long time as they're marked for death for a while. Which means that you can do, uh, I think the stat was about 150 damage per shot with your scatter gun. So what I would do with this is try to find and get behind someone, hit them once, and then take out your scatter gun and shoot them. Now, now we get to the nothing stat. There is a stat where it does crits whenever it would normal, normally mini crit, and you're like, wow, that sounds like a great addition to the weapon, right? If it gives you mini crits, why would you not want to keep using it if it gives you crits? Well, it has a minus 75% damage penalty, which means that even with the critical hits, it does 26 damage, which is not even close to higher than the stock. Stock is 35 damage per hit, with no crits, right? And critical fan awards do 26 damage. 
So if you really just try to wail on somebody with this thing, there's no way you're not gonna just get shot. So the best idea is to do the nine damage you do to players and then run away and shoot them with your shotgun as many times in a row because you'll be doing 150 damage each, which is a fantastic stat. All right, we're getting into the final countdown now. I would say the Rap Assassin is the best uh, melee for Scout. I really do like the Rap Assassin. It does good bleed damage at long range and the Bobble recharges fast enough that you can kind of just chuck it across the map every 10 seconds and get maybe a kill or maybe just do some damage, which is definitely worth it. And you're not really losing out on anything except um, Uber build, because I don't really think that I've ever really come across a situation where, you know, the extra jump on my atomic, um, or my atomizer actually saved me. The Rap Assassin has really, helped me a lot more than even the atomic punch, because why would you run away when you can just shoot the guy, right? And the atomic, uh, or the atomizer, I keep saying that, the atomizer doesn't really help you run away that much either. I can only think of a few places that you can get to with the atomizer that you can't with the, you know, just double jump, right? I mean, it makes a lot of jumps easier, I'll say that, but it definitely doesn't add too many situations where you're gonna be like, oh yeah, let me just jump up on top of this goddamn building for no reason, um, or whatever. It's probably good with a short stop, but who fucking uses with a short stop? Um, all right, we have the candy cane. Uh, this has some weird stats. It makes you take a bunch more damage from rockets and any explosives, which are the most, or not the most, but one of the most common forms of damage in this game. So you're not really going to want to use it because you take more damage from something that is very common. Um, and the upside to this is that enemies drop a small health pack when, you, when they die. I don't know how much health that is for a scout, but I know it's less than the soldier. And the soldier gets 25 health from a small health pack. So good luck feel, feel like trying to break even, even with your health after killing any class and then I'm just dropping a small health pack. I think it would be better if the health pack scaled with like the class that you killed, but it's still kind of useless because the candy cane, it, it just makes you take more damage from a very common source of damage and you don't really get that much of an upside. I mean, you only get a small health pack. All right, now we have what used to be the best uh, melee for a scout in the game, and now is absolute dog shit. It is the Sandman. Now the Sandman is a weapon that you can hit somebody with and it applies the slowness effect. It used to stun them in place, which made it really annoying and you can actually kill people really fast with this, with this like, full on stun effect. But now all you get is a slowness effect, which really doesn't help shit, even if they don't know how to strafe out of the slowness. And on top of that, you can just strafe out of the slowness, just like you can strafe out of the slowness of the Natasha and the um, Blanc Atomic Punch. Bottom line is, is that it applies a downside that doesn't even fucking work to the uh, enemy. So that sounds great. Um, I, I probably le I left out stock, but I kind of explained it to you guys. Stock does 35 damage. Whoopty freaking do. Pretty freaking useless. Sun on a stick. This weapon is like so stupid. It can save your life if you're on fire sometimes because it gives you fire res, but it does crits to burning players. Unless you have a Scorch Shot Pyro on your team, just lighting everybody on fire, which, if you do, kick him. But unless you have that, then there's nothing you can really do with the, like, critical damage upside. So you're kind of just like, hmm, let me sit here and do absolutely nothing for the entire game except hold this out and survive because of fire res. By the way, I don't even know if I have this weapon, but I have seen a few times where people have the sun on the stick and then completely forget about it when they're on fire. So it doesn't even really help in that scenario. Also, it's only like 20% or something, so it's not that big of a fire res anyways. 
Also, did I mention that it has a negative 25% damage penalty for some reason, making the thing do 79 damage on a crit, which is like, yeah, it's double than stock, but it's like marginally better in certain situations than a weapon that already sucks. So I don't know if that's a, that much of an upside because it has no utility other than 25% fire res. So good luck getting anything out of this. Now logic dictates that I should review Soldier next. The thing is, is he has a lot of weapons. So, I don't know. We'll have to see, man. See you guys next time.